Bienvenidos. It's a pleasure uh, uh, for our uh, small gallery to have its first uh, a webinar. And uh, so for us, it's an experience. It's an, a small accomplishment, but it's, uh, we're very happy about it. And thank you to Turia, uh, because uh, Turia not only is present and is quite uh, uh, interested by the panel that we have, um, I believe, that we have uh, uh, reunited. Um, but thank you so, also uh, to Turia for what she does about 154, but for uh, sharing with her the competence of uh, Olivia, who has helped <laughs> all of us to, 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 to go through uh, uh, this uh, uh, complicated uh, but useful uh, procedure. So thank you, Turia. Uh, but uh, this is uh, today all about Fatih Hassan and uh, Fatih, whom I met uh, in Italy uh, some time ago now. Um, we are um, all fascinated by his work and uh, um, among the questions which might come, uh, probably the ones of Turia, the one of Rosa, Rose Issa, uh, such an important uh, uh, curator for all of us, especially with the Middle East, the Proche Orient uh, uh, issues, artistic. And, uh, and of course, finally, the energy uh, comes from Najla, La Redoutable. So um, that's in our name and the name of uh, our director, uh, manager of the, um, of the company uh, who is here, uh, omnipresent, I mean uh, uh, Giovanni. So um, thank you to all of you. And um, I wish us and I wish you uh, a wonderful webinar uh, now. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome for this fantastic panel tonight. Christian, thank you for the words of introduction. It's a pleasure to lend you Olivia, which is the best as well, <laughs> to yes, put in yes. place the panel. Um, I'm super happy as, uh, you know, uh, for the people in the audience that don't know, Sugar Bill Gallery has presented booth at 154 for a few years now in London, in New York, and in Marrakech. So I feel very honored to be able to introduce uh, this, those very accomplished speakers tonight. So I will start with the, the man of the hour or the show, I should say. Fatih Hassan was born in Cairo in 1957 to Nubian Egyptian parents. Whether in photographs, painting or installation, drawings or directly on walls, his texts are deliberately illegible. It tended to highlight the plight of lost language and oral history as a result of colonial domination. Hassan's work is in the permanent collection of the Victoria and Albert Museum, as well as the British Museum in London and the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art in Washington, DC, as well as the Farjam Collection, among many others. He is the subject of numerous publication and writings by major critics, curators, and experts. Talking about major critics, curators, and experts, I'm happy to introduce Rose Issa, which is a major curator, writer, and producer who has championed visual arts and film from the Middle East for more than 30 years. And I have to say a little anecdote. When I started 154 in 2013, I think that was the name that was the most told, you know, told to me in terms of you should approach Rosista and the Rosista project in London as she is actually the one, you know, championing um, the introduction of those all those fabulous artists from Middle East and North Africa who uh, for a lot of them became superstars today. So um, she has been running, as I said, exhibition public and in public and private institutions. She has been running a publishing program and she has also run for several years the Rosisa project in London. She frequently co-curate exhibition with international private and public institutions and she has, I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, curated and did exhibition of Fatih Hassan before. Um, this conversation is going to be led by uh, this discussion between Fatih uh, and Rose is going to be led by Najla Alangeli, which is a British Libyan architect who in 2012 founded Nude 
Noon Arts, a small private foundation to explore the newly burgeoning Libyan art scene and creative movement that followed the 2011 revolution. Its aim, its aim was to spot and nurture the work of talented local artists and bring them to the international stage. I will now let pass, uh, sorry, I will now pass Nejla, uh, who will take it from here and continue this conversation. Thanks a lot, Turaya. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us uh, for this conversation with Rose and Fathi. And thank you, Turaya, again for uh, the, the lovely introductions. And it is an honor and a pleasure to be uh, curating this wonderful artist, uh, Fathi, uh, with, uh, with Christian and so Gabriel. I'm just going to inform everybody that I have already asked uh, most of the questions to Fathi because his English is not very fluent and I had to translate them from Arabic and Italian to English. And it has been quite a journey translating his words. It's just like looking at his art actually. Uh, Fathi is an ocean uh, to curate. And Rose Isa is a phenomena herself, uh, a sea of knowledge and experience. And now I'm going to start the conversation by uh, sharing with you a beautiful image of uh, Rose I don't know, can, yeah, that uh, Fathi shared with me. And it was the image of Rose Issa in 1988 in front of uh, Fathi's work in the Venice Biennale. And also I'm going to share with you um, a lovely quote by Rose from her lovely publication uh, about Fathi Hassan that was done in 2010. And she says, it was before the Google era and few people could tell me where his, where, uh, where his whereabouts. His name was intriguing and confusing as at the time only the controversial Egyptian architect Hassan Fathi was widely known. I did not know yet at the time that Fathi Hassan was a young artist from Nubia who had lived in Egypt and Iraq and had lived in voluntary exile in Italy since he was 20 years old. Fethi Hassan is as gentle as he looks, yet he is a rebel with many causes. He has painted many self-portraits, one of which represents his belonging to two cultures, La Divisioni in 1991, and it's about the Arab African and the white Western. And so my first question is to both Fethi and uh, Rose, and it is about uh, the artistic and curatorial relationship and how it developed and how it evolved over time. Uh, so who wants Rose. to go first? Rose, okay. <laughs> uh, I have lost that photo, you know, of 1988. Anyhow, I'm very glad that you found it and uh, showed it. Uh, it was in fact through his work that I met him. I mean, that was the first time I encountered in the Venice Biennale, because it's a Biennale that, uh, you know, was famous and we had to go to catch up to see the new aesthetics. And for the first time I was seen, uh, I saw something in the Italian pavilion, an aesthetic that spoke to me, an aesthetic that was based, uh, that was uh, Eastern, Southern, uh, had the script in it, uh, looked Arabic, but unreadable. It was, you couldn't read, of course, the script because uh, I remember asking one day and uh, Fatih said, I don't want people to be able to read anything because in my village in Nubia, lots of people cannot read and write. So I would put everybody at the same level. And I thought that was a wonderful uh, saying, but it took me some time, as, as you said, mentioned that there was no era of Google and so on. I wrote to the Venice Biennale. Uh, the, 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 his uh, display was much bigger than what you showed. It was really like a 20, 20, 40 meters long wall uh, that was there of his work. And uh, so I wrote to the Venice Biennale, I said, I would like to meet this artist and so on. And it took almost a, over a year, uh, a year and a half before Fatih contacted me. So the, the Venice Biennale gave him that, my contact details and so on. And at that time, you know, he was quite famous already in, in Italy and had several publications to his name. And at that time, he was publishing a, a new book, uh, very glamorous, uh, with golden things on the cover. And he asked me, since you like my work, would you write something about my work? And I said, of course, I would write something. Send me more images of your work. Because normally, I like to meet the artists, go to their studios, see the coherence of the work before, after, during. 
and then make my opinion, but uh, everything looked great from what the, uh, images he sent me. And I said, yes, I will do it. Uh, then this is how we met finally two years later in Venice Biennale again. We said, I'm, I said, I'm going to go there and we met up in the Biennale in uh, 1990 therefore. Wonderful. Uh, Fathe, shall I answer for you? No, no, I was, I'm okay. I understand. Uh, for me, it's very difficult. To, Let's uh, go for it. Go for it. I understand. Yeah. No, uh, I, the, my participation for Biennale of Venice, uh, it was a surprise for me. Um, and at that time, at that time, I am living to uh, Rome, between Tra Rome, Mark Urbino, center of Italy. Uh, and uh, in that, that period, that time, I am, uh, I, I am painting, pro, um, is not professional artist. Uh, because I am uh, actor for in theater and the interview, the actor interview. Uh, yeah, you, were, you were acting, and, yeah. And, and I am playing chess, um, professional playing chess in the oh, yes. tournament yes. in Italy. Uh, this for me is uh, my period, uh, uh, 1985, 84, 85. And the exhibition, very exhibition, uh, young artist uh, to Italy. Uh, the first moment, uh, 1983, for Enrico Crispolti, organized by 100 artists young to Italy, uh, mm -hmm. exhibition in the Turin and the Rome and the Milan. And uh, is my you first- You were the only foreign one, yeah. The yes, African. foreign one. And, yeah. uh, um, uh, in 87, I am visit Academy of uh, Academy of Art, Egyptian Art in Rome. Mm -hmm. uh, as a director, uh, this period, the director, who, uh, she he, who uh, talab minni addim amali. He asked he, you to 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 introduce, yeah, to to show your works, yeah. Yes, because I am I did uh, you you is very important for me. Your six eight photo for your painting. I am presentation for you in Binali, Venice, maybe oh, wow. because, uh, because it's uh, 14 artists, uh, Egyptian young, coming for uh -huh. Cairo to Rome, and uh -huh. you stay, live here. Uh, uh, it's very... So they, yeah, so they took you because you live in Italy, not that? They took me, yes. So, but, but you represented uh, yourself. You presented yeah, your work. Yeah, I got I got sotfa. Yeah, it was it was it's a chance. Surprise for me, yes, it's and it's a great surprise. <laughs> yeah, uh, wonderful the, surprise. The, but that was not in the Egyptian pavilion. What I saw was the Italian yes. pavilion. Yeah, that's what yeah. I wanted to say. Is, is, this is, is uh, international pavilion. Yes. Yes. And the, yes. the keep of uh, the keep of uh, um, the keep of um, group the keep. Um, Curator, uh, the curator, yeah. And a curator, yes, is the name. I maybe Giovanni Carandanti, Dan Cameron, Rome, maybe five, six curator. Uh, Curators, yeah, that yes, were involved. Curator. And uh, maybe I don't know. I am come. Uh, can see in, in the day, in the day morning. I am going morning, for yeah. the bar after 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 <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> back to home in Pesaro, uh, the box of the the box of the box of letter. Uh -huh, I look the, the box, box of letter. I I when I showed the Assad Assad as I showed the line of the Venice. The lion, yeah, you saw. Yes, oh, wow. In the letter, in the letter. <laughs> in I the letter box. Anna, ah, yes, it's the box. Anna, all the chaduni fil binale, but I ben showed the old tam. Akid fi hagu mohemma. So you were you were chosen for the Biennale. Wow, wonderful! Those and it must have been fantastic receiving that letter. Uh, I'm going to answer what you said about how you met jo uh, Rose, and this is uh, your the translation. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned that your interest and uh, and philosophy in the arts developed when you were living in Cairo and you loved going to the cinema and and uh, and the theater. 
and especially, and then you loved Western art, especially the classical and the Renaissance, which caused you to go to uh, study uh, the art in Italy. And then you said uh, that you were seeking to meet people like Rose and uh, because you were a bit alone in Italy at that time and that she is a sophisticated mixture of civility and the cultural library herself. I did not believe that people like her existed back then till she wrote me a letter with the photo of her standing in front of my work in 88 in Venice. The conversation then began and she invited me to exhibit with her gallery in London. And you said working with Rose uh, is very fluid and uh, it's an easy relationship where we clicked on the cultural level. Uh, she read my work and translated it beautifully. She had the ability to read and understand my multiple cultural uh, identity. She's one of a kind, a curator who knew how to bridge the space of my work and the public. Uh, so this is what you said. Uh, Rose, do you have anything else to yes, add? I have, uh, sorry, it's very embarrassing to see all this uh, flattery and compliment. <laughs> what I can say is whatever Fatih said, I'm sure he was an artist from the beginning of his life, because yes. even if he did theater and play and he wanted to do films, and because I, I was extremely shocked once we were in Lebanon, he had an exhibition there of Arabicity and he knew all the Arab songs by heart. There are very few Arab artists who know their culture very well. And, mm. and Fatih is one of the very few who know his culture very well and the Western culture very well. And I think if he did theater or other things before painting, it doesn't matter, and he did chess. It doesn't matter, Marcel Duchamp did the chess and he hardly did any work really uh, as an as a executing work, but nevertheless, he was an artist. And I think uh, Fatih truly is. It's not something you, you go to school and learn and become. Otherwise, everybody, yeah. all these thousands of people who went to learn art would have become an artist and they don't. Uh, uh, I always quote a, a work from Rumi uh, it says, uh, this is my favorite poet, uh, Persian poet, 13th century, Jalaluddin Rumi. He says, whatever comes, comes from a need, a sore distress, a hurting want. So it's, you know, what fat he did is not because he just wanted to paint or he wanted to play chess. It is really a need. And that necessity uh, made him an artist. Uh, that necessity also made me into a curator because my background was a mathematician, historian, literature. It was a, a journalist. And when I came to art, it was just simply because nobody in Europe was covering and presenting an image that I liked of my culture. Uh, then in 1982, during the invasion of Israel of Lebanon, I was caught up in France, in Paris, and I didn't know what to do. I couldn't go back to Lebanon to see my parents. So I did a film festival because I liked cinema. Like we all did, the older generation, that was the only diver, the only place we go to entertain ourselves was films really. And Beirut was very rich in that. So uh, you could meet, I met Pasolini and Bechstrand of everybody. You can meet Truffaut in Beirut. We are 10, 15 people. So it was a very easy way of getting introduced. So my first, cultural event was a film festival in Paris, which was done uh, within uh, two weeks of the invasion of Lebanon. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I would like to thank Kazafi here because his, his embassy then, I know that everybody hates him and everything, but his embassy in Paris was the first one I went to do a yeah. film festival. And I said, I need 10,000 francs to hire a cinema for 10 days or two weeks. And I need that money. And without asking my name, anything, an envelope came with the cash, took a taxi, paid the cinema. Thanks to that, the festival happened. So whatever was the embassy then, I tell you, they were extremely elegant it's not, and graceful. It's not like that now. <laughs> I'm sure it's not like that. But uh, this is, we're talking of 1982. This is my yes, first yeah, festival. Yeah. And from then onward, uh, I, 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 actually it was at Versailles at one stage when I came to London, I said, you know, I'm not really, I didn't study art. I like art. I have friends who are artists and so on. He said, you know, just do it. And then we see uh, whoever comes to the forefront and is more uh, into art and thing, then take over. And that, that was the help of actually uh, Edward, Edward Said's uh, advice that you have to do what you have to do. And in this case, I will also say that was a necessity because really I felt embarrassed that the only interviews were of leaders or people that we never elected. 
But for me, my ambassadors were the artists that I met. They are the ones who spoke on our behalf. They weren't the ones who caught the, uh, the pulse of our country and exactly. represented the, the best image also aesthetically, conceptually, sociopolitically. Yeah. Uh, my next question is to you, Rose. Uh, it is about uh, uh, what is, I mean, how, how is your methodology of working with Fethi sort of uh, came about? And uh, what, what, did you can, what did you want to convey to the public from, from, from his work? Um, you know, different. his methodology is one thing and conveying to the public is another. Methodology mm. is more, I mean, if, if people who go and study academia and now there are amazing curatorial things, they have maybe, I don't, I think each artist is different. Each encounter is different. You, you never have, if I was a method to apply to all the artists, it wouldn't work. Uh, there are some which are really madly emotional, then, then some of them are very professional, it's cold, it's warm. In the case of Fatih, uh, really what, what attracted me, not only that first aesthetic that I saw in him, finally somebody in Europe is saying, is, is you know, is projecting an aesthetic that I, 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 I appreciate. Uh, so later on, when we work more closer, I remember uh, you, we put it actually in the cover of, of the publication, uh, yeah. Fatih didn't do many words that were readable, but in this yes. case, he did, he came one day something, he came with some little thing, haram aleikum, yeah. which is in Egyptian way, it's not shame on you. But it means, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you saying what you're saying? Why are you behaving the way you behave? And, and I thought really, it's a question we should ask uh, Eastern leaders, Western leaders, the whole world, all the people who are really harming nature, politics, arm dealers, everything. And this haram alaikum for me was international. It wasn't only linked to the Arab world. Uh, yeah. It was, and actually I had a problem once. I remember it, it, we had this project space in High Street Ken, and it was the beginning of the fashion in 2008 of um, this Islamist people. And there were five of them came here and said, shame, you cannot put haram alaikum on the window display. I said, what's the problem? Uh, what, what, do you read Arabic? They said, no. I said, what do you read? Uh, apart from Allahu Akbar, what do you know? <laughs> and uh, they didn't actually, they were dressed really very fancy. I think they came to, to break up the gallery. And oh, I God. said, uh, you know, haram alaykum, it means shame on you. And actually shame on you to come here. And instead of being interested in the artwork to see what it says, you yeah. want, you react uh, uh, by, by being embarrassed or thinking that uh, it's an insult to the, to the Arabs or to the Muslims or on the contrary, it is criticizing everybody who should be ashamed. A state of being, yeah. I yeah. don't know it's if like... you have to be ashamed of yourself, but probably the way you are behaving, you should be ashamed also. Of the... So this work applies also to you. Uh, so it was a very strange because my, my, my assistants were a bit embarrassed, afraid in fact, that maybe yeah. with the grass or the, the, the gallery, there will be stones on the window. But then they stayed a little bit longer. And as I was arguing, they left without any harm to anyone. But I remember it did evoke things. And, and uh, even in Beirut, they were, they said, you know, it's not good to say haram aleikum as if, you know, the Arabs should be ashamed. I said, it's not about, uh, it's haram. Why are we doing what we're doing at the level of uh, high level, low level, daily life level? What are, why are we doing what we're doing? And that was, I think, a, a moment that captured really for me the tension and the, uh, the momentum of, uh, of that era in London or in the Arab world and everywhere in the world, actually. It's an excellent series and it's actually quite still relative to what's happening right now. Oh, um, of course, it, it, is, um, it is forever. It will be haram alaikum, you know, it will be. Uh, <laughs> and, and you know, the work of Fatih, as you know, 80% of it is almost uh, either figurative or abstract, the big magnificent yeah. containers for yes. which in his first publication I wrote about the containers. Yes. Uh, but for me, a container also is a container of thoughts, the container of history, the container of many Memory, things. Yeah. Uh, but he yeah. did, he did the beautiful animals, gazelles and elephants and so forth, so on. And all his, all his uh, um, uh, doing was beautiful. It wasn't only but the, the haram alaikum for me was a statement because I, I don't do art for the pleasure of decorating somebody's house. I do art as a statement of where we are now and how we are now or how we feel. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, thanks, Rose. God, that's a lot to think about. Uh, yeah, but hey, Asuki, you want to say something? Yes. 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 Mungkin? Yeah, of I course. Can... Uh, um, Kutta was all um, um, in um, Haram Alekum got Menu Anasagir to sin. I am as young. Because okay. oh, drowned, yeah, in, in, yes. uh, in Nubia. Yeah. They left to Cairo, okay. Yeah. So what Fatih is saying is that actually the, the, the phrase, haram alaykum, shame on you, was with him since his youth, since the sort of when his village drowned uh, earlier on because of the, I think, the dam, the Nile dam. And, and then the whole family had to leave because of poverty and go live in, in Cairo. Uh, it is. Yeah. yeah, and the government just left the people uh, sort of, you know, uh, diasporic, own. really. Yeah, on their own. Uh, and from, yeah, and, and for me, it really affected me watching my grandfather, who was the chief of the tribe, uh, of the village and watching him cry where they lost their whole sort of livelihood and, and they ended up with absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he died uh, very sad, yeah. And this, so this haram alaykum is somehow evolved over time with you and it just, you know, you have he used it. Exactly. So it, it is, and it's still traveling. You're still using it a lot. I mean, I, I, even from the recent work that we are exhibiting with this exhibition, there are some new pieces with the word, uh, with the phrase haram alaykum. Uh, my next question is, uh, as I've mentioned before, and that Rose has, has also said it in her book, that uh, you are a rebel with many causes. Uh, shall I answer for you, Fathi, as you okay. answered to no, me, I'm or okay. do you want to get? Yeah, I'm okay. and it was a very, uh, it was quite a, 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 um, an interesting answer. And so Fathi's answer, he said, uh, being rebelliousness, uh, being rebellion, uh, rebellious, yeah, rebellious, comes from um, comes when there is no justice or fairness in the freedom of thought when hypocrisy and falsehood are the tools of what is dictated in a society. Rebelliousness comes when there are no clear sight of justice and it increases when injustice and justice are mixed with ignorance. I believe that perception of beauty is a human quality with the love of the other. Unfortunately, in the part of the world that I was born into, injustice is spread through deprivation and has become to be the norm. Rebellion is a kind of sensory collective philosophy that radiates from the conscious science preceding the event. Rebellion is also prohibited in the ignorant dictatorial world. Um, so this is your answer, uh, Fathi. And uh, uh, would you like to elaborate more? I was does it haga or la or la kida No, okay, okay. <laughs> This is your word. I, I think you cannot yes. be an artist without being a rebel because yeah. it, it's, uh, as I said, it was a necessity of him to express himself, whether visually per, um, by performing. Uh, you, you have yeah. to be, uh, you have to have something to say. I, I see quite a lot of painters and sculptors and other people that I don't call the artists because there is a difference between an artist and a painter. There is a difference between an artist and a sculptor. There are people who have something to say, and others know they want to do colorful things, beautiful, you know, flowers, plants, everything, but not necessarily uh, who have something to say. And not coming from an academic art background uh, uh, and having a lot to say from our region, uh, of course, in my career, 30 years career, I only chose films and artworks and artists who who represented something for us, who represented a moment, a, a, a concept, a sociopolitical situation, and a rebelliousness, because we, unless you're a rebellion, you're not going to change much, and change is needed. And actually, it was very interesting. When I asked Fathi the question, he goes, and Rose is one 
one good rebellion as well. <laughs> so, we have to be, we are, all have to be rebellious. You yeah. know, Nehru, uh, it was Gandhi who said, if you want the change, be the change. And if yeah. we want the change, we have to be the change. Yeah. That's uh, 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 No, because uh, rebellion, for me, because uh, it's very difficult to be uh, born in country and uh, and they feel that it does not belong to you. Mm. It's very yeah. this for me is very is very strange. The sense of yeah, you don't feel like that you belong. Yeah. In that that specific place, and I guess Fethi, you embody a lot of us. I mean, it, the story yeah. goes for me as well at the moment. I mean, uh, you don't feel like you belong to where you're supposed to belong. Um, you know. Um, it's something that has become, is becoming really a phenomenon for a lot of people. Um, and I, I guess your art uh, sort of um, is, uh, tells the story and of, 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 of who you are and what you want to be. It provides that kind of space to, to, for you to unleash. And as you say, tarweed al nafs, tarweed al ruh, to tame your, your mm. um, you know all that you feel and that all that you have that what makes you up uh okay so i uh, my next question which i think rose has answered a little bit which which is what are your favorite works by fathi and you mentioned the haram alaikum series um, haram alaikum for me having... was a more no but you know when you like an artist's work almost all the works yeah. the tiny scripts to the little elephant to the gazelle to the uh, portraiture to his mm -hmm. photograph uh, for me speaks, it's one. All the work is one. Yes. Uh, I mentioned Haram mm -hmm. Aleikum because we, we put it on the cover of the book and I wanted to say this is how we all feel. The artist express it, but we, he's expressing also what we feel. Uh, no, a, a lot of, of, of the works he has done, he has done more. You know, the, uh, you, you talked about his self-portrait, the Divisione, we are all white and black. Actually, when I arrived in London in 86, 87, the Arts Council invited me as being a black representative of black art representative. So I was black art uh, because it was non-Western. Whatever was non-Western was black art. And it took how many decades for somebody like country like Britain to have uh, Tate Modern. They didn't have a modern uh, a museum of modern art. They had the Tate Britain, which was only for the British, only yeah. for the British. And the only British towards the end, towards the 90s uh, uh, or 2000, were uh, uh, the non-foreigners who were British were Mona Hatoum, uh, Beza Hadid, uh, Shiraz Hushiari, Anish Kapoor. It was just the beginning that, uh, but you had to be British. Otherwise you were not part of that, uh, even in, in a country like, uh, like London. So the, there was a misrepresentation, uh, underrepresentation, let's say, non, or non existing representation of other voices and other aesthetics. Great. So, which brings me to the next question Do you think the Western gaze has sort of evolved and developed the last sort of, I don't know, 20, 10 years? Has it become much more uh, appreciative or understanding of? the other art, I mean, the art of the, you know, or not, I, or do I, they I, see it? I, I don't know, you know, we, uh, I don't, uh, it's not about the gaze or the look. I think now the word, whether they want it or not, became more global. It's very embarrassing for a museum to have only British artists. If you don't have, uh, it, it means that your uh, cultural history is very limited. But I remember mm -hmm. that when I moved to London in 86, there are lots of important French painters that were totally unknown in Britain. So this is only a few kilometers away and the British didn't know about the French artists. So it's not only the Arabs or the black uh, or Africans who were missing and they were missing uh, on the scene. Uh, because I remember when I um, launched the Kufa gallery in 86, 87, uh, we initially wanted to do more, more Middle Eastern art, but then I had Indian artists coming to me say, you know, nobody represent us. And then African artists, I remember uh, much later uh, when I started doing exhibition at the Brunei Gallery, uh, um, uh, uh, Sultan of Brunei Gallery, the, yeah. then we had, I, I had to present African artists because nobody was representing them then. There was October Gallery a little bit, 
tiny bit. There was uh, uh, Rebecca Hosak was doing Australian art a little bit. You know, but it was very tiny thing comparatively, and no institution was representing them. The institutions were closed, and actually, to the credit of ethnographic institution, people criticize ethnographic museum. Oh, we don't want to be in the ethnograph. But British Museum, VNA, uh, the Tropen Museum in uh, in in Amsterdam, um, the Museum of uh, Imperial was Museum of uh, War, Imperial mm. War Museum in yeah, London. Yeah. They were the ones who were more interested in what I was exhibiting because they understood, they knew the history, they knew the region. Museum of Mankind knew a little bit North Africa and yeah. Middle East. The uh, British Museum knew the expert of Islamic art spoke a bit of Arabic and so forth and so on. So this is how it all started. It started by um, ethnographic museum getting involved with contemporary because my argument to them was that, you know, your culture stops at 18th century and we're still alive, you know, and you don't have anything <laughs> of 19th century, 20th century, and now. So you better start catching up. And they are yeah. catching up to their credit. They are. They yes. are. Um, Fathi, you said most of the collectors of my work are Western, mm -hmm. as I am not totally an Arab or an African, which is, you know, and yeah. I am a nomad in this landscape. And I am lucky to have crossed paths with people that have helped my art to be noticed and acknowledged. Uh, do you want to add anything into this or? Now, this period now, uh, the people, the black people is the difficult for, because uh, black lives matter. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Black uh, lives matter, yeah. My the period, movement. my period, I am young in Italy. It's when you very, were young, very, yeah. Very good lucky for me, I am black man. You were lucky that because, you were black yeah, in because, the 80s in Italy. Dishifati is here, is not black man, he live here. You were coming you were the for only me. invitation for me. <laughs> so it was an advantage, me. yes. So the you were the only now one. Is not advantage, but this period is very important, it's very advantage. <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting. It's an interesting, yeah, twist. Yes, of, the it, moment, yeah. the time is different time. It's mm -hmm. interesting, interesting. And I'm going to ask you, Fethi, also about uh, the work that we are exhibiting at Soul Taming. It consists of morphological organic tapestries of scriptures, narratives, archives of memories, cities, and meditative dreams. Did this process grow respectively or, 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 or organically? I'm going to answer your, uh, you know, I'm going to say your answer that I translated. Mm -hmm. And you said my artworks that are exhibited for soul taming are a tapestry of my life through time. It is a weave made out of mixture from my, you know, my background, which is Egyptian, Nubian, Islamic, African, and Western. Uh, my arts, my artworks are the crossing between the various cultures that I belong to seeking to see the light and it is the art that I produce. I don't know how it comes out, except that it exists and it is nurtured and inspired from nature, literature, theater, music, and cinema. And uh, do you want to add anything into this or is this your, your yeah, last one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I would like to ask you as a curator, yes. because you, you, had, you had an eye about uh, Fatih's work, uh, yeah. you, were, you selected, what did it say to you? Why are now you're showing this work? This is more relevant. Uh, the, uh, I have to say, I mean, when I met Fathi in Edinburgh, mm -hmm. I stayed, what, four hours with him. And to be honest with you, I wanted to, to spend like a whole month to, to really look more. I mean, from the small sketches to the big, beautiful yeah. paintings and some of his recent artworks are um, very resonant with what's happening to me personally as a person who has been you know, living in different sort of environments and contexts and also what's happening to all of us uh, in the world. Um, uh, his big piece of them, it's called the Middle East, the Sharq al Awsat, and how it's like sort of dissolving and with all the like, it's like flights and, 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 and birds that are becoming helicopters and, and uh, fighter jets. And it's just, the, and then the words sort of just sort of mixing into each other, but at the same time, completely um, sort of uh, disappearing uh, or blending into something else. And it's, and it's more or less what's happening in the region 
and also it's affecting all of us uh, uh that's one of the big pieces and also his like sort of uh the 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 the, the big pieces where he had all these different layers of uh, the names uh, like one name like burhan or or the other one that had uh, the name ayub which means patience and it's a very very old um uh, sort of uh, name and, and, and the meaning of it in Arabic is quite profound, but how he depicted it and that and this like is like a whole tree of, 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 of this, this incredible kind of uh, um, uh, language that's coming out to you explaining, uh, you know, what, what's, what's happening and what's happened and all of the stuff that has to be told and these stories that we need to know and, and this, there's a lot, I mean, honestly, for me, as I said, he is an ocean. And then you, you come to some of the other pieces, uh, like the one that's called The Crossing, and it's really about Fathi. Uh, you can see all of his sort of, uh, his music, his love of theater, his love of Africa, his Nubian symbols. More uh, than the, the love, he truly uh, uh, knows it. He's not yes. He has yeah. the and knowledge. Then, I, I'm fa fascinated. He can sing you any songs of Abdul and the Abdul. landscapes, Rose. Yeah. I mean, he had landscapes of like these little. You remember Rose? Oh. You remember Rose? I am. I am. Uh, uh, Rose, I remember. I shall not forget you. Could forget me. Eh, eh. Oh, you still sing? Yeah, yeah. He's he's a singer. I mean, wonderful. Uh, he knows the wording, and he he has a huge culture in cinema. Well, yes. not only Italian, Western, American, Arab cinema. Mm. You know, this is a guy who, who has uh, culture. And, and the other thing that really sort of uh, made me even more um, uh, attracted to his work is his writings. Mm -hmm. uh, I read the book, uh, The African Who Fell From the Sky, and the, the, it was just an incredible journey. And I mean, I mean each... Uh, sort of each text that he's written is is a piece of his art um i mean when you read it you're like oh my god it's here and and that's another sort of uh connection that that really led me to to investigate more about his work um and and i think it's relevant to be shown now yes, i mean he yes, said yes. yeah black lives matter but they you know it's beyond that there's there's quite a lot to be told from Fathi's uh, art. Najla. Yes, yes. I am lucky. Yes. I am lucky because I am born in the. I am born in center to Cairo, uh -huh. in this street on the Suleiman Basha. In the street, there are ten cinemas. Metro Goldwyn, Cairo, everything. Okay. Uh, he was saying that he was born in, in uh, where he was when he was born and raised in, in Cairo. It was in a street that was full of cinemas, and I guess theater, and that's how Kafrish, this whole Kafrish, Kafrish, uh, everything. Yes, and that's how sort of this this cultural kind of uh, background really helped him uh, in, investigate and and sort of. Uh, really uh, become an artist. I'm just going to check because there are some questions from the public and the very important one, uh, because we don't have much time, oh God, we've got 15 minutes to go. Um, uh, this question uh, is, says, doesn't the duality, hybridity, pur purity confine identity, an extremely complex issue in a simplistic Manichaean alternative? And then, then the question goes, aren't the magnificent works of Fethi Hassan a factual demonstration of the falsehood of such a dilemma through action. And shall I answer, uh, you know, your, your answer, Fathi? Yes. It's quite a, okay. Yes, so, and this is what Fathi uh, said. He said, when it comes to identity, the Vatican seller, a book by André Guide, comes to my mind, a sort of historical knotted thread to unravel. You feel like you are crossing the ocean by one arm. Solitary thought is your only companion as your country is not with you. Uh, uh, then every single action becomes a mystery and identity loses its brightness when surrounded by false applause. They tell you, what are you doing here? It would be better if you leave, but leaving soon falls into nomadism. And it would be better if you never complain. So you learn different languages and take on jobs and your whole land that is not yours, you adapt. Then if you like, bravo, but you are still alone. 
politics is made only for serious people, those capable of killing innocents. And you should pretend to be healthy. Personally, I have not got any more time. Nobody has ever wanted me in the place where I was born. An absent homeland, sick, hypocrite, with no identity, following foreign waves, not ever capable to impose a rhythm in the world orchestra. Just a listener who claps and then leaves the theater as a spectator, disappearing from the scene with no record left behind. You should neither complain nor scream because you are alone. And then you went on to say about your work, I am a small invisible point, that's it. And I do not belong anywhere. I am a stranger to my country too. I have no country. I am an individual who does try to accomplish a simple job of painting, keen to spot the place where an identity is missing and occasionally emerging in a stranger land where freedom of expression welcomes even the foreigner. Whilst in your own land, lost to slogans and forced poverty, and limited, any individual who dares to emerge should leave. Then you should multiply your identity to assert yourself. Being three or four persons in one, strong as steel, crazy to never be denied, singing in the shower, but not on the open stage. We are serious people. We cry as soap tears up our eyes, not to be seen. We watch the passing by clouds holding our head up whilst admiring a flying bird and raising our hand to stroke it then you realize that you are very far away. I think this really conjures up your, your, most of your work, Fathi, uh, truly from the heart, uh, beautifully said. Um, uh, honestly, <laughs> yeah, and I think, yeah, uh, just for... Yeah, and, It's all uh, sometimes like a sea of uh, tears but yes. the reality is that the, when you love life, and Fathi does it, this in the same way, actually, uh, I, I was thinking of Abbas Kiarostami, who only, not only made films, he did photography, he did painting, and he wrote books and poetry books. Fathi does the same. He, he has added chess uh, uh, oh, competition yes. in him. And uh, I, I think uh, as an artist, uh, you, you only belong to yourself and to what... Uh, your own world, and that word is an exceptional and unique and original word that uh, you you share with others, that uh, communicate with the, to others, uh, a sense of uh, longing and belonging, despite the fact that he doesn't belong to any world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and 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 I think um, uh, also. Um, uh, as, I, as I mentioned, his writings uh, really um, reveal a lot about his work as well. And they are like a translation. There's like two, two, okay. two texts, really. The words that he writes and then the paintings that he paints. And it's the same thing, but one is more sort of a, a, a visual kind of impact, while the other one is more, so you have to take it in and imagine it. Um, um, Fathi, do you want to add anything else? أنا عاوز أسأل روز إن إحنا عملنا عمل أنا وهي مشترك في بيروت. فتحي wants to ask Rose about a, a, a collaboration they did in Beirut. I should mention actually that. Can yes. you keep it? For example, another word that I'm attracted to is the word عروبة. Arabicity. Oh yes, Arabicity. Which yes, can, yes, which can be the, 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 the word Arabicity in the diction, English dictionary doesn't exist, so I had to invent exist, it. To make yes. It what makes an, uh, us as an Arab? And I remember when we did that exhibition in, in Beirut, uh, they didn't like the work, the, the word Oruba in Arabic. They said, no, this is linked to socialism, to Nasser time and people would yes. protest. Mm. So they did something terrible they wrote Uruba instead of Ain with Alif, Uruba, which doesn't exist phonetically. <laughs> and I said, no, we have to take off this. Just leave me the English title. And then uh, Fatih was so uh, good with me. He went and I, I, we had the first panel, instead of putting thing, a huge panel of uh, four by five meters. And he went and painted on it, an artwork on, the, on, on top of it, he put Uruba. 
of course, as an artwork, they cannot censor it. They cannot say, no, it's linked with. And I kept saying, no, for example, I went to Dubai and Abu Dhabi and other places and they have Oruba Street. So what's the problem yeah. with Beirut? Where supposedly were the most open-minded, the least censored, and yet, and this is Solidaire, huh? who censored mm -hmm. it. They said, no, no, downtown, they would think we are the socialists, Nasseries, this and that. Uh, so it is his painting that saved the, the title of the show. Uh, the entrance, Personally. huge panel. And uh, I, mu I must say that later <laughs> on, they loved it, of course. And they said, oh, we would like to keep that. And I, uh, and I said, OK, you can keep it. Can he sign it? I said, no, because you didn't allow us to, to put the title, <laughs> then we don't sign it. Then you don't have an artwork that is signed. But you can keep the artwork because we love the artwork. But he won't sign it. The drove it. I liked very much Jandar Manazi at that time who wanted it. But I said, it was, you have to tell Soli that they can keep it, but they are not going to have an artwork. They are going to have a statement from us that this word exists. It's a beautiful thing. It's about the concerns of the Arab, what makes us tick, what makes us love, what it is about who we are. And if you cannot absorb that, it's your problem. It's no longer, and it was, uh, thank you still. I, I will never forgive, uh, forget <laughs> that, uh, Fatih, how generous yeah. of you it was. How generous, generous, generous. Lovely. It is an interesting word, actually, Arabicity uh, mm. or Aruba, because, it, I mean, as you, as you mentioned, a lot of people are probably, even now, they're like, no, and what, exactly what's happening in the region. But the word itself, it's the strength, it has so many meanings. Mm -hmm. What is it really? Uh, what is it that, you know, for this whole big chunk of landscape that, you know, unites this world or, or actually deconstructs it as well? I mean, that's another way of looking at it because it, I think, I don't know, this is the, I don't know, can you see this? It yeah. says, Uruba wa Arab. Yeah. Yeah. Arab in Arabic is, is another big word as well, you know? It's all the um, conjugations that come from exactly. that Exactly. All the and declination, is, all the deriv derivations that comes from that word. Exactly. So it's it's that's that's it. And I think that's the, the, it the, the was clip. a magnificent artwork. It was a magnificent artwork and it moved everybody and everybody, of course, loved it and so on. And the whole television <laughs> came and saw him painting it on that wall. That was <laughs> wall. <laughs> so it was a fantastic, uh, a fantastic event. And uh, had, had it not been his background in theater, in communication, in uh, mm -hmm. writing, maybe we wouldn't be able to save the exhibition. I think really he saved that, uh, the title of the exhibition. And we had to be, uh, say, the embarrassment of the Oruba with Aleph to take it out. I said, it's an insult to the Arab world. To have it with the alef, the word. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're almost closing. I just want to ask both of you, how has it been 2020 um, with all of its surprises? And it's, you know, we're almost there. We're almost at the end. Of uh, course, what project, uh, what, uh, yeah. what things get you guys have sort of Listen, achieved uh, this year? You're asking the wrong person because I'm too old and I always... Uh, <laughs> It's true. I miss, of course, exhibition and event and films and so on. But uh, for the last two, three years, I have been focusing on publishing things yes. because I tell to everybody, my sponge is full. I cannot take more new things. I have to empty the sponge and fill the press the plunge and had the, the books out and the ideas out and published and so on. Then I can absorb. Uh, I reached an age where I cannot absorb so many more uh, exhibitions or without giving what I have. So I have to empty in order to take. So for me, yeah. it was actually very strangely a positive time of reflection of finding oneself of collecting my yearbooks and diaries and be productive in another way that will see the result next year. Thank Fatih, you. How did you manage in the cold uh, Edinburgh? <laughs> you painted, no? An artist. Uh, yes, I, 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 um, I, I for me, COVID is no problem. Yeah. Because, because <laughs> I, yes, I, I me. stay in home. I am painting and the music, cinema, chess. Yeah. That's Maybe it. The time is, the time is <laughs> no problem for Wonderful. me. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, I, I I just, because we, we, the, now we can access every film we want by yes. downloading a film. So we can access artists and biographies and artworks and books. So truly, 
for those who I think I can understand that the young who want to be in the street do the sport meet for the young it's very frustrating it must be very frustrating especially for the children to not to be in school that I found yeah. criminal mm -hmm. but uh, for other people for artists you can always read books you can always write books you can do things yeah. and it's it, it, it worked for me you don't even right. remember that there is COVID. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's there's one question, last question from the audience to to uh, to Fethi. I'm just gonna ask it. It says that he's asking, uh, what about an Afro-Italian culture? As we have, you know, is there does it exist an Afro-Italian culture? Because you know you've lived a long time in Italy, culture? just like an Afro-American or no, Afro a British, Italian. like a British. Yeah, does it exist strange. really or no? Strange. It is strange, yeah. Because you know what? There also there is also the new museum, the afro italian African Italian Museum. Apparently, it's supposed to be well, open in Rome, Italy, and it's quite a controversial. No, it's, people, it's quite a controversial yeah, people, uh, concept. Uh, the people, um, must be Arafo Italia. Italia uh, is not uh, the same. People center of don't Earth. really know Italy. It's not Italy. international country. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> no, it's I am sorry. Italian is not it's international true. country. It's, maybe I it's don't just know it... why. Because after, uh, I don't know. The Italian is beautiful person, everything is yeah. beautiful. But is Italian is not uh, yeah, okay. So what it's Fatih is saying, I don't know. yeah, yeah, so, uh, Italy is a bit uh, solitary in terms of its uh, culture. So there isn't maybe because the language is language, Italian language is very, it's not probably, international language, maybe. I don't know. Interesting, uh, interesting. But it will be interesting. I don't know if you've if heard, Rose, about the African Italian Museum that's supposed to be opening. No, I went, I I went to the African American Museum last year that opened yeah. in Washington, uh -huh. D.C. But this I can okay. understand because there was a huge community of African, Black African, African yeah. in America yeah, yeah. who are Americans, in fact. Yeah. And, and they then, were uh, uh, ignored. Uh, that that was, uh, for Italy, I don't understand because- No, truly, Italy is very- no, Yes. Maybe, it, yeah. so it, and the wrong, uh, and, and the current uh, uh, Black citizens of Italy are people who just left Africa recently on, on boat, but they are not, I haven't heard of being many that many artists to do, uh, yeah, African Italian. Maybe maybe there no, are. We we'll discover. No, I no. I doubt. No. Okay, no. guys. Well, uh, our time is up. We can talk forever. I hope we all meet thank again you, in Nashla. London. Thank you. And thank you for, for you. For, uh, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. And Fatih, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And Thanks. for everybody else who's listening, please uh, check the exhibition online yeah. and please do come and see it when it happens in London. And uh, let's hope, you know, uh, this COVID sort of uh, doesn't... Uh, you know, I think the vaccines are going to open up the galleries <laughs> and anyhow, not that yeah. many people go and crowd the galleries. It's not like... Exactly, a exactly. So I because think on stage, yeah. people should go physically and see it. It's very yes. different uh, physically yeah. and online because there is a saturation of online visuals but yes, people should go you have hung the pictures no on the gallery yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, no yeah. it's gonna happen in january but it has to be seen because yeah, of course to, to do it justice what to the do it justice. see uh, is very different than it's than different yes work. Thank you. exactly and and thank you again to both of you all of you to christian thank you, to you so to, thank you uh, Thanks, Rose, and hope we see you in London and have a fabulous holiday, in Nice. I hope so. Thank you. Uh, and uh, take working care. Working holiday, I'm working always. We have no options. That party for me, whatever I go, have to work. <laughs> thank you, Rose. <laughs> thank you. Thank to you. you. Thanks again, and thank you to everybody, to Turaya, to Giovanni, and Christian, and thank you everybody that joined us. And uh, thank you very much. We see you all. all. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.